Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. So I think that I have found a GTA Vice City Easter egg in the Cayo Perico heist. I've been playing a lot of this heist recently, and when I say Vice City Easter egg, I'm talking about the old Vice City from 2002. I'm not talking about a future GTA game. And I think this Easter egg is referencing Gonzalez in Vice City. I feel very strongly about this, because there's just way too many coincidences in coincidences in this. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. Now the character that we're going to be focusing on is this guy right here, Gustavo. This guy is apparently El Rubio's right-hand man, and El Rubio gets really angry at him in the first cutscene, claims that he's making him look like a fool, and he considers him incompetent. And then later on in the scoping out mission, El Rubio actually has Gustavo killed in a pretty brutal way. So let's watch this cutscene right here, and then I'm going to break it down for you guys. I'm going to talk about why I think this is a major easter egg. You have no idea. <laughs> All right, can you show us where to set up? <laughs> of course! Where's Gustavo? I, I mean, guys, you gotta come back, huh? <laughs> Gustavo! Skip it. I told you not to go anywhere. Take our friends to the stage, huh? Show them the setup. Do you think you could do that? Uh, you feel the panther? Uh, you don't know to. Oh, you did something right! Finally, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now run along. Just wait, guys. Everything you ask for and more, huh? It's gonna be a fucking party! Guests are all here. Best crowd money can buy. Okay, this must be inside the compound. Looks like Mr. Rubio. And Gustavo. He was at the plane. Oh, is that a panther in there? You know, there is old Russian proverb. Do not trust Jarmin with Panther. Get it! No, no, oh. no. Oh shit. No. Oh no. This will sting. Show him what a big fucking man you are. So during that cutscene, El Rubio actually feeds Gustavo to his panther, and Pavel actually says, don't trust a German of a panther. Now a lot of people were confused on what he was referencing, I actually caught on to it right away. What is he referencing? El Rubio is actually Colombian of German ancestry. His name is Juan Strickler. In the first cutscene to El Cayo Perico, he actually mentions that his grandfather is from Germany. Now when Pavel says, don't trust a German of a panther, he's not referring to the animal the panther like in the game. He's referring to panther tanks, because during World War II, Germany actually used panther tanks to invade the Soviet Union. And here's a picture of a panther tank on the screen. A panther tank, a destroyed one, actually appears in the zombies map in Black Ops Cold War in the starting area. But moving on to Gustavo now. What is his connection to Gonzalez and his connection to Vice City? This is a character in Vice City, Gonzalez. Now, Gonzalez also appears in Vice City stories, but this Easter egg is referencing him in Vice City. Now, do you guys notice something similar? Gonzalez is wearing the ex exact same shirt as Gustavo. I had to actually go back to my Vice City walkthrough and I looked at what Gonzalez was wearing and I was like, wait, that's the exact same shirt. I was thinking, is it the same shirt? It is the exact same shirt. So that's the first hint, is the shirt. The second hint is both characters, Gonzalez and Gustavo, their names start with G. Now, Gonzalez is a last name and Gustavo is a first name, but that's what they're refer referenced as. In, in GTA Online, he's called Gustavo. In GTA Vice City, he's just referenced as Gonzalez. So, shirt is the same. Their names start with a G. Third hint, they are both the right-hand men of drug lords. Gustavo is the right-hand man of El Rubio in GTA Online. Gonzalez is the right-hand man of Colonel Juan Cortez, a powerful drug lord in Vice City, in GTA Vice City 2002. Additionally, another hint that we got is both of the drug lords, both El Rubio and Cortez, their first names are Juan. In GTA Online, El Rubio's name is Juan Strickler. In GTA Vice City, Cortez's name is Juan Cortez. Good idea. That's a great idea. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh! There's this retired colonel, Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez. He's the one that helped me set up this deal well away from Vice City's established thugs, okay? Excuse me, I just want to say a few words. We're all here because of one man. The kindest, most generous man I know. Juan Strickler. 
El Rubio, my brother. Another hint that we got is that both drug lords, El Rubio and Cortez, both of them hate Gonzalez and Gustavo. Even though they're their right-hand men, they consider them incompetent, they consider them an embarrassment. So they both despise them. Additionally, both drug lords, Cortez and El Rubio, throw parties. Cor Cortez throws a party on his yacht in the beginning of the game. In GTA Online, you have El Rubio throwing this big party of DJs. Like that Colonel, your parties are there for a triumph. <laughs> I can only apologize. Well, they're not, day. amigo. How do we find you? <laughs> Our business is very trying. Barbarians at the gate. A time for rewarding one's friends and liquidating one's enemies, amigo. Whose party is this? I don't know, but it's gonna be sick. A lot gets written about you on the internet. They talk about cocaine, turf wars, missing journalists. But you know what they never say? <laughs> How big your heart is. You're beautiful. You're humanitarian. And you throw the best parties in the world. So from all of us, we thank you. Stop it, stop it. I said, oh, come on. I said, no speeches. Huh? You're embarrassing me. Huh? But thank you, my brother. Well, maybe more like my half-brother, eh? <laughs> hey, he's got a lot of hits from the 2000s, eh? All right. Who's ready to fucking party? I give you China music! Let's go fucking Lord! And the biggest proof that I think that this is a, a Vice City Easter egg is both El Rubio and Cortez have their right hand men, Gustavo and Gonzalez, killed. As we saw in GT Online, El Rubio kills Gustavo by feeding him to the Panther. Colonel Cortez has. Gonzalez killed in Treacherous Swine, a pretty early mission in GTA Vice City. And the reason that Cortez has Gonzalez killed, it's a little bit more complicated than in, than in GTA Online, but it's pretty much the same thing, both incompetence and an embarrassment to them. Gonzalez was actually the one who fed information to Diaz about Tommy's drug deal, in which Tommy got ambushed at the beginning of Vice City. On top of that, Cortez has been looking for a reason to get rid of Gonzalez for years. He just doesn't like him, he considers him incompetent, and that was pretty much the final nail in the coffin when he had fed information to Diaz. And additionally, both characters are actually killed very brutally. They both die pretty badly. Gustavo gets ripped to shreds by a panther, and Gonzalez also gets ripped to shreds. But he doesn't get ripped, ripped to shreds by a panther. Take a look at this cutscene right here on how Gustav on how Gonzalez actually dies. Mr. Versetti. Colonel. Thank you for coming. Please sit. Lobster. No, thanks. Uh, I am ashamed to admit that one of the causes of our mutual problem appears to have been the loose tongue of a man I used to trust. I've been carrying Gonzalez for years, but now his incompetence reaches new heights. It's only right that you kill Gonzalez. Did he do it? It's the money that's important to me. For well, this kindness, I'll reward you. And then we will find your money together. He will be at his penthouse, half drunk probably. Use this. That's right, a chainsaw. Cortez orders Tommy to kill Gonzalez with a chainsaw, and he probably orders the, him to use the chainsaw to send a message. Because if you think about it, a chainsaw, it's a really, really brutal, brutal way to kill someone. And when El Rubio feeds Gustavo to the panther, really brutal way to die also. In both cases, there's going to be pretty much nothing left of them. They're both going to be ripped to shreds. So I don't think it's a coincidence that Gustavo gets ripped to shreds by a panther and Gonzalez gets ripped to shreds by a chainsaw. So take a look at the cutscene right here in which Tommy actually goes after Gonzalez and kills him. And yes, you can kill Gonzalez in other ways. You can run him over. You can shoot him. But the canon way to really kill him is the chainsaw because the mission provides you the chainsaw. Either. I'm gonna shut that big mouth of yours. Uh, he's got a blade. Stop running, you fat slime ball. Uh, uh, for me, you cheap bastard. You know, the majority of people that when they do their oh, walkthroughs. I wasted my life and my look. Stand still and I'll make it quick. Wait, 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 chili pepper. 
The majority of people, when they do their walkthroughs on YouTube, they just shoot the guy, but it's much better to use the chainsaw, the mission that you were provided, the, the weapon that you were provided with in this mission. But you're squealing. No one cares, bad so. And because Gustavo is a reference in, it to, in an Easter egg to Gonzalez, this is now an Easter egg within an Easter egg. And what I mean by that is Gonzalez's original death is actually an Easter egg itself. Now, take a look at this. Gonzalez dies in 1980s Vice City. Vice City is based on 1980s Miami. In the film Scarface, which takes place in 1980s Miami, this film has very strong influence on GTA Vice City. In that film, Tony and his friends, they go to a drug deal. They want to buy cocaine from a Colombian gangster known as Hector, but Hector double-crosses them and just wants to kill them and take their cash. When Tony won't tell Hector where the cash is, Hector actually has Tony tied up in the bathroom with Angel, and then he pulls out a chainsaw and kills Angel pretty brutally. This is why there's a chainsaw in Vice City, because it's a direct reference to Scarface, and in the game Vice City, you can actually find the same hotel room. There's a hotel room where you can actually see the briefcase with the cocaine. But in the movie, what ends up happening is that Manny comes into the hotel room when Tony doesn't come out for some time and ends up shooting up the place to save Tony. And Hector gets hit and Hector actually starts fleeing out the window. He actually flees with the chainsaw. This is the ironic thing. Hector is the one that actually runs outside with the chainsaw. We're in Vice City. Tommy is the one that chases down Gonzalez with the chainsaw. Additionally, Hector in Scarface, Gustavo in GTA Online, and Gonzalez in GTA Vice City. All three characters are Colombian, and Gustavo and Gonzalez, they kind of wear this tropical colored shirt. Hector wears a different type of shirt in in Scarface, but you guys get the idea with it. I don't think that it's a coincidence, and in Vice City, they did an Easter egg in reference to Hector and Scarface, and then so many years later, in GT Online, they did an Easter egg in reference to Gonzalez, which originally was an e a reference in Easter egg to Scarface. I just love this, and I love when GT Online does stuff like this. When it goes back to the original crime roots about being a criminal, being a gangster, they added a drug lord and his private island that you can rob. I like this. No futuristic stuff, no oppressor Mark II stuff. Yes, I understand that there's an underwater car in this DLC, but you get my point with it, that it's not something crazy like the Doomsday Heist. Instead, it's focusing on the past original roots of G GTA when it comes to crime. I love this Easter egg. There are a few minor differences between um, Cortez and El Rubio. For instance, Cortez in Vice City, he's an ally of Tommy, and he has the player kill Gonzalez, where in GTA Online, it's El Rubio that has Gustavo killed, and El Rubio is Colombian, but Cortez, he, his nationality is never speci specified, but he's from somewhere in Central America. So Gonzalez is Colombian, Gustavo is Colombian, Hector is Colombian. Great Easter egg, awesome Easter egg. I think they did a great job with this. And one last thing to wrap up this video, Unfortunately, there's probably going to be some people that are going to start saying, oh, this is proof of Vice City being the next GTA game. This is not proof of GTA 6 being in Vice City because of the Gustavo and the Gonzalez Easter egg. It's not. What this is, is this is an Easter egg referencing their past game, Vice City. There is no proof that this is a reference to the next GTA game going to be in Vice City. Now, the next GTA game could very well be in Vice City. That's a strong possibility. But this isn't proof of that. It's just a reference to Vice City. Unfortunately, though, I can probably see there will probably be some YouTubers that will say that this is proof of Vice City 
being in GTA 6 when I don't think that that is. But let me know what you guys think down below. I had a lot of fun with this Easter egg, and I really did enjoy it. And this is one of my favorite videos. I had a lot of fun making this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, enjoy my content, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.